Welcome to Screen Riot. This week's movie is Midnight in the Switchgrass, a mystery from 2021. This episode will contain major spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, it's available to rent on all major streaming services. Go check it out and come back to the podcast, because this is Screen Riot. Welcome to Screen Riot, the podcast where we review movies chosen entirely by fate. If you're having difficulties finding movies to watch, then this is the podcast for you. I'm one of your hosts, Justin, and alongside me are co-hosts Eddie, Kyle, and John. And each week, one of us spins the wheel of fate, and the host must pick any movie from that genre. If you'd like to see all the movies that we've reviewed so far and how they've ranked, visit ScreenRide.net and have a look at the movie ratings page. At the end of each show, we'll spin and see what next week's movie is going to be so that you can follow along at home. Also, while you're at ScreenRide.net, make sure to head over to the support page to see all the different ways that you can help support the show. So, like John said in the opening, we were taking a look at a movie called Midnight in the Switchgrass. It's rated R and has a runtime of 1 hour and 39 minutes. And it was directed by a man named Randall Emmett. Has anybody ever heard of this this guy? No. No. I don't think Me so. Me either. He is a producer, I know that. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. So, um, he's directed uh, two movies, one of them being this. Okay. Uh, the other one is in post-production. It's called Wash Me in the River. So I guess this guy just likes titles, sentences as titles okay. of movies. Um, but he is a massive producer, like John said. Um, he must have a hundred producer credits at wow. least on oh. his his, his uh, IMDb page. Maybe you should just go back to producing. <laughs> yeah. So I ran through for your your uh, your viewing pleasure. I went through <laughs> and kind of picked out some of the more uh, known of his producing credits, just so you can kind of get an idea here. Fast five. Um, no. So, in 2002, he did NARC. It was that movie with Ray yeah, Liotta. I remember NARC, yeah. Yeah. Um, he did Amityville Horror from 2005, the one with uh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. That's not bad. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, he did 16 Blocks from 2006 uh, mm-hmm. with Bruce Willis. Not great. Uh, I kind of liked it. Yeah. I like parts of it. Um, he did uh, The Wicker Man from... Uh, 2005 with, the, with Nicolas Cage. I will say the best part of the Wicker Man is the part that was cut from the um the, all the all the releases that you get now. It's the part where they actually start torturing him. Mm-hmm. They showed in the original one. They showed like they put the bees on his head. They they you know break his ankle. They showed it all in the mm-hmm. theater version. And then when they brought it to DVD and Blu-ray and everything, they were like, okay, it's a little bit too much. And they cut all. I mean, it was the best portion of the whole movie. Nah, yeah. that was a marketing ploy. You think? Yeah. Well, it looked bad. If you if you go back and look at the CGI of, it, of the bees and all, it looks terrible. It doesn't look great, but it, it, that movie was crap. Two thousand five. The it movie was crap. Otherwise, at least you got to see somebody be tortured. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's Eddie, what, yeah, that's what Eddie loves to see. <laughs> okay, we're starting to starting to unravel the mystery that is Eddie's movie selection. I'm just saying, if you're going to make a crap movie, at least torture somebody in it for me. Go ahead. The Wicker Man is Harold does one of the worst movies ever made. It's so, bad. It's yeah. bad. I agree. The '70s one is not great either, though. Yeah. So you can't be like, oh, they did it better back in the day. No, they no. didn't. No, it was really yeah. bad back in the day. Wait, too. I'm going to write that down on my list. Yeah. I've, I've, I've got it. If you want to yeah. borrow it, it's <laughs> shit. So go ahead. Uh, but he also did the Rambo remake in 2008. Not great either. No, uh, Day of the Dead from 2008. Nah. Eh. Righteous Kill from 2008 with Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. Nope, my hair lost me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It wasn't nothing to write home about. Yeah. It was no heat. Oh, God. <laughs> it's true. Uh, <laughs> he did uh, that Maybe Escape set. Plan 2013 with oh, Sylvester God. Stallone and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Which is basically Tango and Cash remade <laughs> kind of, <yeah. laughs> with the yeah. same character, yeah, with the same guy, with the, or the same actor, I should say. It's Tango and Cash minus Cash. It's so stupid. I'm like, nice. you might as well have brought Kurt Russell back. I mean, at least ma- give at least give us something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, he also did. I feel like I know you. <laughs> if, if one escape plan wasn't enough, I he know. also did two and three. Two, yeah. yeah. And Dave Bautista's in it for no apparent reason. Just yeah. David ba- starring Dave Bautista. He's now in this, it for 13 seconds. Now, this is what I found interesting. Hmm. He loves to work with Peter Berg, a director that we've had numerous oh, times yeah, yeah. on this show. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. So he did, he produced Lone Survivor in 2013, Mile mm-hmm. 22, 2018, um, uh, a couple what, others that I didn't actually make. What about the, Hancock? He did not produce Hancock, oh, okay. but I, I want to come back to that in a second here. Okay. Um, he, he did that Gaudi movie. In two thousand, that God, awful which is movie, considered one of the worst movies ever as well, with John Travolta. Yeah. So this guy basically is known for making horrible movies. It, it's it's, it's the not, shotgun. It's, it's maybe the shotgun it's the, the modern day uh, 
totally forgot his name. Yep. <laughs> Don Dollar. Yeah. No. I'm waiting. Don Dollar. No, I'm Roger, looking. Roger Corman. Roger Corman. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's like the modern day okay. Roger Corman. Yeah. I like that dramatic pause that you oh, did. So there, he's Kyle. a genius. Is that <laughs> what yes. you're trying to say? So he's a yeah. genius. Yeah, he's a borderline genius. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are, if you're not uh, aware, by the way, Kyle pauses every once in a while for dramatic effects. Yes. <laughs> That's what that was. <laughs> that wasn't confusion at all. Nope, not at all. <laughs> well, he also produced The Irishman. Uh, in 2019, yeah. you know, which yeah. is an okay movie. It's, it's not great. Right. It's her- yeah, there were people like raving about it. I'm like, eh, it's too fucking long. Like, yeah, it's way I had to long. split it up into two days mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, um, but uh, so after I started looking through that, all all the credits that I know about him, I started like, okay, well, what about the writer then? Like, mm-hmm. is this an accomplished writer or something like that? Uh, no. So the writer was Alan um, Horsetail. <laughs> what Horsetail? Horsetail. Horse nail, oh. my autocorrect. <laughs> That's what I was laughing at before I said it. My autocorrect must have uh... horse tail. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. call him Alan to horse tail because nobody knows. There you go. Um, so this is Alan Horse Tail's first movie. <laughs> <laughs> Even Microsoft Word's really? like no one cares who this guy is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so then I was like, then I don't know. For some reason I got the thinking. Okay, I didn't really. I, I did not like the editing in this movie either. There, nope, there's some no. stuff, massive no. problems with it. So like, okay, what about the editor then? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who, who the hell Who's was that? that? Uh, so the editor was Kobe Parker Jr. Mm-hmm. He's also a big collaborator with Peter Berg. Okay, so is this like Peter Berg's like B Squad? It, it's it's kind of like they went off. Like maybe Peter Berg was doing something, and they went off and did something else. Oh, okay. yeah. Or Peter Berg read it and went, no. Or and I'm not like, going to be. Come on, I really like it. Let's well, then you direct it, anyway. it then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's just do it anyway. I mean, Peter doesn't know everything. Is he a Stallone uh, hippie or something? <laughs> no, I just was trying to make them sound like the slack jawed <laughs> idiots that would make this movie. So. Yeah. Um, but he, other mo- so it, movies that he has uh, edited was Friday Night Lights, The Kingdom, Hancock, Battleship, oh. uh, Lone Survivor, um, Ant Man, uh, Patriot's Day, and Mile 22 were some of hmm. the bigger ones. So he's not oh, yeah. a horrible editor then. It, so he, 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 then he knew better. He he still edited it this way, and he knew and he knew better. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, he probably just edited from what he got. Oh, you know what? That's, That's what true. I was wondering, too. That's true. He probably had to fix things and cover things so up. There were so many continuity issues in this movie. Well, let, well, let's talk about the one that you and I were talking oh, yeah, about the, earlier. The diner scene. Yeah. Uh, I guess it was the second diner scene okay. um, where uh, Megan Fox's character sits down and the waitress comes over and she's like, hey, do you want anything? She's like, no, nah, I'm good. And then she walks away and she immediately grabs a full coffee cup and starts drinking it and then sets it down and then it cuts to Bruce Willis you know like over over the shoulder shot of Megan Fox to Bruce Willis and she's like drinking but yet you cut back to the other shot she's got it down she's not even drinking it and it's like where the what it's did, a magical did, coffee cup oh yeah. yeah yeah it's it's insane yeah the continuity it, it, was not great that threw me and then of course the the mall cop uh, outfit that the what was it the L E F D oh god don't get me started okay. or the F D L E no, so it's not the FDLE, I can tell you so, that. So the first time when we first meet Emil Hirsch, right, um, he they show this uh, exterior of a building, and they've got this obviously CGI uh, FDLE yes. written on the building, you know, mm-hmm. Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And he even actually says, and he says multiple that. times that he's part of the FDLE. Right. Yep. Yeah, but then they do an interior of that, and then we see him walking down the hallway, and he's got a shirt on that says uh, L-E-D-F. L-E-D-F. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, what is okay? What is that? Is that like law enforcement department of Florida? Yes, and uh, and he's got it on his back or whatever. And then he walks over, and then there's a big seal on the wall that says law enforcement of you know department of Florida on it. I'm like, well, why does the sign out front say that? I've Not got, say that. I've got one even better. His boss, who's a terrible actor. Oh God, yeah. Has a city police patch. On I know. His I shoulder. saw that too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. which he's in Ballers, by the way. Yes, oh, he really? is. He plays uh, Vernon in Ballers. And i uh, that's all I was thinking. I was like, okay, here's this washed that up football player yep. Yep. that goes into esports, and now he's this, this some sort of like police chief or, well, or see, head, of, I head of the police FBLE. chief. I, I, I like him in Ballers because <laughs> yeah. he's believable. He is not a, a believable well, and, and, city <laughs> police or FDLE or FEDL or and, BFE cop. I don't know. I was in the same. I was in the same boat. Like I was watching him. 
I was watching him in this, and I was like, God, he's so much better in Ballers. Oh, like yeah. he, he's so much better as like a young kid football player who's kind of like trying to figure out his way. Him as the boss, I'm like, oh, no, that's not believable. No, no. it's not mm-hmm. believable at all. <laughs> he, uh, there was, there were You're a off few. The force, Emil, yeah. give me your gun and badge. <laughs> there were a few bright spots <laughs> like, in this oh movie, but that, but he was definitely not one of them. No, and I agree with you on the uh, the continuity stuff. The other problem I had with Emil Hirsch's like outfit was his uh, Chinese it was, Amazon yeah, version. It was like of a, a mall cop. Uh, uh, yeah, something ar- he armor got, plate carrier. He got from. Uh, pl- wow, where is it? <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> Dram- Roger Corman. Dramatic effects. Go oh, ahead. shit. <laughs> Hang Amazon. On. I, I Am- Amazon was where I was going. <laughs> no. It sounds. It looks like something off of Amazon. It no. looks like something out of. Uh, it looks like no that, Party City. That, yeah, that's because I say the Halloween oh, like store. Halloween. Oh, What's Spirit, this? Spirit, Spirit, the Spirit yes. Halloween store. It's a Spirit yeah. Halloween store. It was yeah. really bad. We don't know the budget yet. That's a good point. Yeah, I do. Um, it was bad. The uh, yeah. and the flag, the flag always gets me. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, the uh, shoulder pads. Yes, I mean the the stars are on the back. And I'm like, no, they're supposed to be on the the front. Yeah, of, the flag like, always moves. Come forward. on, the flag always flies forward, basically. And you call yourself a law enforcement it's, officer. It just isn't good. Like from top to bottom, the production is pretty shoddy. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing I think that's interesting is that the movie runs what was an hour and thirty nine. Hour thirty nine. Yeah. yeah. At least twelve of those minutes is actual flashbacks from oh the movie God. itself. Yeah. Which they just kept replaying the same scenes, but now they did it in a montage with a little bit of music over. Which it. makes I'm no like, sense in context. No. No, and you, you you know my feelings about montages. Yes. I don't, I don't like them. <laughs> Even like Rocky had a montage. I know Rocky's montage <laughs> makes sense. It propels the the movie forward. He's training. The, these did not yes. make sense at all. And the Tra- training montages always get a pass with me. But go yeah, ahead. Yeah, whatever yeah. song they were playing, Ugh, yeah, I the don't soundtrack know. in this was weird. Horrible. And just it's, it's absolutely it's very nineties. The the soundtrack yes. is very nineties. It could have been in Heat. Go ahead. But I, <laughs> could have no. <laughs> Mm. You, you and he. I'm waiting for. I was waiting for the ballad of America. <laughs> Look, yeah, right. That would have been good. <laughs> so, I have some major problems with the film. Oh, number one. Does anyone? And this really isn't even a problem. This is this is kind of ironic. Okay. Do Do you find it ironic that Emil Hirsch, a convicted strangler, mm. is trying is playing a cop trying to catch a strangler? Is he a convicted? Is he strangler? was he convicted? He was. He pled guilty. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he Damn. He, he, he like in real life. Like in real life, mm-hmm. he Holy strangled God. a Paramount uh, executive. Oh my God! Yeah, a female Paramount executive like, killed her. Or no, no, no. He he didn't kill her, but he he strangled her. Dear Lord! To the point where she passed out. Okay. Yeah. yeah so he got. Um, That's interesting. He ultimately pled guilty, and uh, he had did 15 days in jail, 90 days probation, 50 hours community service, and paid $4,750 fine, and he was ordered to pay restitution to the lady he strangled. Do you, do you remember when this was? Yeah, that was 2015. 2015. Holy cow. So, so I find it a little ironic that he's now, playing a, he's now playing a cop. Trying to find a strangler. Trying to find a strangler. Oh, my God. Right? That's... That... What you a think, twist. <laughs> do you think, you think the producer did this as a, as a marketing ploy? <laughs> Maybe... Yeah. It's a strangler. It takes a strangler. A it takes a strangler. It's meta, to man. Catch a strangler. Yeah, yeah. It takes one to know oh, one. God. Yeah. <laughs> Careful, that might be copyrighted now. Yeah, yeah. right. Meta. meta. Zuckerberg. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it looks like he choked her unconscious at Sundance at a Sundance party. Oh, yeah. good they, the night. two were seen hanging out, having fun, and then four hours later, he's choking her out on to you know to, to the point of being unconscious. So that is a little ironic, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah in a weird way. Um, but what else did you have? Apparently, he's struggling oh, to come back into the. Uh, into the industry, though. I mean, this is not exactly a comeback film. No. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Um, I have a big problem with just the, the, the writing in general. Oh, it's awful. They, oh, yeah. the, the writing is terrible, and they don't use terms correctly. Mm. I mean, I'm from the South, and they use the term reckon. Just to, just to, for instance, they use the term reckon properly, and we don't do that down here. Yeah. You know, the, the line says, um, how the hell you reckon that from here? Oh uh, well, yeah, reckon we means like calculate that. or yeah. something. Yeah. We don't say that down here. We no. go. You go. I reckon. Yes, I reckon you don't remember the blah 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 or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know that kind of thing. We don't. We don't use it properly. Now I will say this: um, you have a bit of an accent. However, your accent is nowhere near whatever the fuck Emil Hirsch was doing in this movie. <laughs> That's well, because it was a fake accent. Yeah. Well, sometimes <laughs> I, I felt like that he had a lisp. Like See, there was, yeah. there was one point where he like bent over, uh, looking into the car. Yes. where Megan Fox, I think it was his gum. 
he had I, I watched it a, a little bit uh, later on and I'm like okay th- there's got to be something in his mouth because it looked like he maybe had some like chew in his mouth and he had you know his, his uh, under jaw he, coming out and he's like yeah yeah we're gonna get, kiss this guy you know? I don't know he, he sounded like he was his, from New Orleans he or channeled his inner Mike Tyson yeah <laughs> Yeah, he was. He was. We're gonna catch this guy. guy. Yeah. We're gonna catch this guy. You have yeah. any leads? So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have this major list going on. Talk, talking about them, the car scene where you guys are at right now. The um, when when he walks up to the car and then we immediately jump to another scene. I was totally confused about what we were watching. Like I didn't know if it was a oh uh, the sawgrass. A, no, the no it was it was the tunnel thing. It was the we jumped to we jumped to the girl basically, and I was like, wait, what's happening? I, I was confused as to what we yeah. were watching. Like, yes. are we watching? Are we watching what happened to the girl who was murdered? No. We're, we're, oh, it's a completely different person. Like, what is fucking happening? Yeah. Like, I yeah. was totally lost. And that happened four or five times mm-hmm. where I was like, yeah. wait, is this... Me too. Did this happen before what's happening now? Or is it happening currently? No, it, it's happening in the future. What, I think those were well, just fillers. I couldn't well, tell. I was well, like, what's happening right now? But you're right. There, There is a segment of the film where um, he's going to meet... Uh, we don't know this at the point, but he's going to meet uh, Megan, Megan Fox, Fox. Yes, but then he meets this other girl. Yes, which I thought that that was the girl that he was abducted. Looking. Yes, okay, I can see that. You know, I thought like maybe he put her up in a hotel. Well, there like, were too many girls then, who looked all the same. Yes. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And then and then we show you know fast forward a little bit and we show Emil Hirsch uh, right. He strangles her. Sorry. Whoop. Well, not Emil Hirsch strangles her. <laughs> nope. That, that was a, a might need Freudian to clarify. slip. Yeah, what a twist. Um, allegedly. Luke Haas, <laughs> the serial killer. No, <laughs> no not Infected. allegedly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lucas, no, Lucas Haas. Lucas Haas. Lucas yeah. Haas, yeah. The, the actor, Lucas Haas, um, he strangled the, the girl. And then fast forward, we we see Emil Hirsch come to the bathroom. And we see the girl dead in the bathroom. But we don't see her face. Yeah. So we can't tell if it's... She's wearing almost the same exact clothes of the girl that... He abducted earlier. Who's currently locked in a barn still? But we don't know that yet at this no, point. No, there's, it's it's all over the it's, place. Yeah. Like I, there was there weren't enough connecting pieces to right. put together this hodgepodge of a f- shitty TV movie mm-hmm. that basically <laughs> what you end up with is is guessing the whole time as to what's taking place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this I'm is what happens that. when Hallmark tries to make anything but a Christmas movie, like a thriller movie. <laughs> they try to make a so, serial killer movie. So talking about that in a sincere way, real fast, there's, there's like two things that really kind of, to me, this should have gone straight to video or straight to TV. One, the coloring. There's like no real attention paid to palette in this whatsoever. There, everything's either super gray or green. And I'm like, why is everything so bright in this scene? And yet there's no color whatsoever in the well, previous it looked, it five. Looked scenes. Very, it looked very warm to me. Like very oh, reddish and warm. orange. I didn't see yeah. warms. I saw blues well, and Well, there grays. wasn't any continuity in the... In the coloring. In, in the yeah. coloring, where you take a film like um, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Yes. You've got that sepia tone throughout the throughout the entire film, unless it's something specific that they want you to... That pay they want to stand to. out and they yes. want you to pay attention to. Yeah. They just obviously no thought went into color. The flashbacks were differently colored. Yeah, they yeah, were. yeah, yeah. They, they were. They were just not needed. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Oh, Which I would, I would... You know, it kind of makes... It would make sense to change the color in the flashbacks just to show like a different time yeah so it's easier for the viewer but like you guys are saying the flashbacks were not needed at all no like there's only one scene that that they did a flashback that i went okay that's an appropriate scene it's where he's driving home to emil hirsch is driving home to um to be with his wife and the sick daughter and he's thinking about like the murderers and all in his head to for him to like okay i'm gonna turn around and Go do more police work instead of go home, right? Yeah. But the problem is, it starts off really good with the flashbacks because they, they go through some of the murders and stuff that he's been witnessing and some of. But then they start showing him looking through um, the paperwork, which is okay, I get it. But then they start showing him like uh, doing random, just everyday things. Like you would not be thinking about these things. Well, there's that. Like him taking a piss and, you know. <laughs> there's also, well, there's also like the weird fixation with Megan Fox. And I'm like, did we miss a whole. Was there yeah. a whole lot of scenes shot with him and Megan Fox that I just didn't watch? Right. Because it, it appeared... That, that was that, included in the flashback I'm talking about. Yes, yeah. and what it appeared to happen was that apparently in this movie that we didn't see, um, him and Megan Fox spent so much time together that, that he actually is not just worried about her as a as a person that he was on this random stakeout with, but also, or, or not even as a, as a law enforcement officer, but he actually sort of pseudo cares about her. Because mm. I got the feeling yeah. that he was like... Kind of like her more than my wife. 
who's yeah. back home nagging me about feeling. the baby. I got that feeling too. But oh, when yeah. the fuck did that take place? Like we, they talked to each other twice, mm-hmm. yeah. and she apparently trusted him so much to to be his like to be her wingman going into this bar to, to snare a serial killer. It was very odd. That's all I can say. The other part that I was and the most obvious quit, narc okay. in a corner. Yes. Of a bar, yeah, yeah. Well, he's wearing that that jacket that which I really like that style of jacket. The bomber, the, the yeah. very thin bomber. Yeah. But I'm kind of like, oh, cop, cop, over here, cop, guys, over here, yeah. handlebar. You, know, you know, the guy holding the uh, the earbud constantly <laughs> oh, and guy. talking to himself. Yeah, that guy. Oh, and like, also the opposite corner, the really extremely hot chick that has no business doing in this bar, who just yeah. hit the guy in the solar plexus and nobody jumped her ass, nobody beat her ass, no yeah. no old lady from the for the guy who just got hit in the chest. No, no, just yeah. randomly. You look solar at, plexus. You look at all the other women free beer from in the, that from bar. The bartender. I mean, it's like Megan Fox sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, yeah, completely. Well, the other problem I have is that the writing is uh, honestly worse than any episode of Criminal Minds I've ever watched. It's, <laughs> well, it's like, the- I literally watched like this movie was an episode of Criminal Minds. And in particular, and they did it in an hour. Bruce clear, Willis with commercials. Bruce Willis's character. <laughs> oh, Yo. So cool. Horrible, not needed. So this is how bad Bruce Willis is. I took notes. Okay. Oh wow, you took notes. Wow, Eddie. I have a question. In effort. That's how bad I, that, that movie. I just was. have a question. <laughs> that was really bad. I said Bruce Willis is wooden as fuck. Oh yeah. To be yeah. clear, the most phoned in performance I've ever seen for Bruce Willis. And I'm not sure of something. And here's what I said. I'm not sure why he sounds like a robot humped a bad Bruce Willis impersonator. <laughs> but what he's doing or not doing, more specifically, is pretty awful. Like he just is. It sounds like he's reading off a teleprompter that no one else can see. Well, right. Well, that scene that we were talking about earlier with the the car when Emil comes and talks to him, he bends down yes, and talks to him. Yeah, it looks like he's like, reading a script. He's got his like, right like out he's of head, camera. He's, he's got his head down. He's talking, and he's like, looks like he's reading the script. He goes, "No, Pensacola." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on, Pensa horsetail. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then he and then he did, gives Something this, like you know, that. typical Bruce Willis smolder and he's just like, uh, you know, I'm Bruce Willis. But see uh, when you're when you're 78 years old, it's no longer smolder, it's just called you shit your pants. Yeah. And that's what it looks like he did in this movie yeah. consistently. I feel bad. I really do. Like let him just let him be go the way of Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson is just being hounded by paparazzi walking out of basketball game. Let him go that route. Let him gain 600 pounds. No one needs Bruce Willis anymore. I'm sorry. I like Bruce Willis in the 80s. He's awesome, right? In the 80s. Mm-hmm. Pretty good in the 90s. Mm-hmm. After that? And not bad of a name, singing boy, a voice either. Eh, yeah, Bruno, doesn't he have like a blues? You're into that Bruno's whole... Bruno's back or whatever uh, it's called. I'm good. I'm good on that. But <laughs> uh, can you think of anything in the 2000s that he did that was worth watching? Well, like I said, I kind of like 16 Blocks. You see, I, I don't the know how Freer that. Die Hard? No. No. no, no, you, you no, shut your mouth no, when you're talking no, to me. No. <laughs> You're about to get kicked off the goddamn like off the show for that shit. Yeah, you no. didn't like that. Eddie? Yeah, it was okay. He did yeah, that yeah, one movie on. with um that one. Was it not Matthew Perry? The guy from um <laughs> Matthew Chandler. Perry. Chandler from that's uh, Matthew Perry. That's right, yeah, Matthew Perry did that one with Matthew Perry. Which was where um he, oh he the whole like nine a, yards. Yeah, the whole nine one, yards. Yeah. That I believe was that 1990. Was okay. That was 1999. I okay, believe. so it was not 2000. No. All right. Now they did the whole ten yards. It's shittier sequel in around 2001, I believe. I could be wrong gotcha. on the years. I'm mm. pretty close, though. I believe. I'm I mean, it, it, it's small things w- w- with me too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the uh, the mom, the the girl's mom. Uh, oh God, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. I mentioned her too. Um, I forget her name. Yeah, nobody knows her the, name because she's a two dimensional character that shouldn't even exist. Georgia Kellogg. Yeah, oh Georgia my Kellogg. God. Right. I well, I, I, I if if she would have been seen throughout the film more. <laughs> yeah. I think she would have been she would have been better. Wait, which mom are we talking about? The the blonde Kellogg. one. Kellogg, yeah, the one of the victim's mothers. The oh, one that died. I'm sorry. Wrong mom that I'm talking about. Go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll attack mo- mothers here in a second, I think, but not that I, one. I, I think she, honestly, in, in my mind, I think she was the best actor in the entire film. I didn't, with, with, I didn't like with her. This mom. I, I, I like her. She stood out. I think she could have, I think she yeah. could have, could have, could have been in, in more of the movie and I'd have yeah. been fine. My big, biggest problem mm-hmm. wasn't her acting, wasn't even Emil Hirsch yeah. in, in, in the scenes that they were in. It was the um, brick, concrete foundation, stucco home that she said her family had been in for nearly a oh, hundred years. years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's not a hundred year old house. No, mid mid sixties, maybe seventies. Not even that. That looks like a nineties house. Well, it could have been remodeled. My parents could have built this back a hundred years ago. We've oh. been here since yeah. eighteen ninety. Hey, hey we- cop, you want a whiskey? 
We start. We started the ranch house movement in the six. We did in the thirties, but yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I will say I, this. So she wasn't a bad actress, but I, I, I will say too. This is gonna get me shot, but um, Megan Fox grew on me once she got away from Bruce Willis. Every scene she's in oh, with Bruce yeah. Willis, she's as wooden as he is. Almost like she, she was like, I'm going to act the way you are because apparently this is normal in the universe that we <laughs> are in. Is this yes. how we act, Bruce? So you think like yes. maybe maybe her performance was because she, he wasn't helping her? I don't you know? think so. Because once you, my favorite scene of the movie, as shit as it is, is the bar. The bar scene where they're trying to trying to get Lucas Haas. I agree with you on Emil Hirsch sitting there with his finger. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> but the rest of the acting in that movie, like when Lucas Haas slides up to the bar and tries to do his thing and everything, I'm like, okay, this is at least watchable. Like right. it's at yeah. least well, viewable. It looks like you're like a typical good movie. And, exactly. And scene. you've got and you got Emil Hirsch chasing a guy down in the rain and all that. I'm like, you know what? At least I can watch this. Okay. After that and before that is just not great. About that bar scene. Yeah. Did anybody see how she got drugged. No. No, and that I have bugged no the shit out of me, too. I think it was the spray. I saw... Spray? What I, spray? I saw it in I'll the trailer. I did not see it in the movie. Oh, oh. What happens in the trailer? In, in, in the trailer, you see a little um, eyedropper yeah. go over her, um, go over a beer bottle and put in, like, two drops of liquid. Well, that's see, not in the final cut. It needed no, to be I, in I didn't there. see yeah, it in no. the movie. No, I was like, wow, this guy's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> he drugged her from across the room. I mean, yeah, yeah because yeah. they only have two interactions. Mm, skadoosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they only have two interactions. Yeah. They yeah. cheers their beers. Yeah. And then uh, Lucas Haas um, basically rubs the back of her neck with his left hand. That's yeah, it. Yeah. And, that's it. And right after he touches her, uh, the back of her neck, she starts... You know, it's getting uh, woozy. Yeah, yeah. getting woozy. <laughs> and so the other had... Vulcan neck punch that yeah. we didn't know. About. Well, that's what I thought <laughs> at first. That we didn't know that's, about. That's what I thought. I yeah, was like, no, is he just like doing in, yeah. some kind of stress thing to her, like some nerve? So I, th- I thought the same thing. I was like, I have no clue how he did it. But whenever he had her chained up in the barn by the neck, Ugh. and he's hanging her, she had. He brought out some spray right. that I thought was like perfume or cologne or something. But it woke her up. I, see, I thought it did the opposite. I thought it, after that, when he sprayed it, is whenever she started to like kind of pass no, out more. No, that's no, when she, got up. When she well, walked out. Yeah. See, I'm, so I'm just up. confused with it then. Yeah, but, again, I'm back to I don't know what the hell. But, again, drop her, I guess. But speaking of chaining her up by by the neck. Yes. She's obviously not hanging by her neck. Yes, I know. The, you can see the freaking harness and everything. Yeah. I mean, Justin and I did a better job on the movie we worked on in high school. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> oh, that's the, what you were the, talking the, about. The, yeah. Being chained up by the neck thing, I was like, okay, if she's really barely on her toes to be clear she'd be purple by now um yeah possibly even blue if you if you really want to get crazy and her eyes would be bulging a lot more with uh mm. with uh you know all the little arteries and veins in her eyes oh, popping yeah. out so yeah, yeah I, I, I didn't realize that one quick part, stab yeah. of the uh, you know in the gut with a screwdriver would knock this guy she out she did for get the him count. she did get him three times there was one was that, three? Yeah, I it was three it was times. One. It was one in the stomach and one in the chest for sure. At least two. Oh, I thought it was okay. just one stab. No, the one in the chest is, I think, the one that was supposed to be the one that takes him out. Oh. And I'm like, ooh, you can do a lot with a, with a punctured lung. I don't think you're going down that quick. No, yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, well, I was with you, Kyle. I thought she, I thought he just got stabbed. It's once just one in the jab gut, in the and stomach. I was like, and... there's no way that guy's dying. I mean, it would hurt like hell. Yeah, but uh, I, I mean, don't think it's, it's gonna a be... stomach wound. You're you're gonna yeah. be okay. Not gonna be dead in twenty seconds. Well, and I'll be honest with the. Okay, when he goes to his neighbor's house and he's looking for oh, the yeah. girl. <laughs> so that is one of my best, one of my favorite scenes. Fair, I, fair I like the old I, lady. I, what are you doing? I'll give you, listen. You well, just be, leave now? No, I'm willing to give it to you. Well, like, just because fine, the yeah. tension that it, it, it drives a it's, good amount of tension. I agree with you. And it's up there on my list of, of in this sh- shitty movie, all the scenes. It's definitely up there. I yeah. would say it's at least probably top three. That, number uh, one. <laughs> I just wish that he had just killed her. Like oh, when I when, when he comes in there and he's like, you know, something suspicious. And oh, he starts what is that this? Blanket. Is this mud? Which, yeah. by the way, if she was really a real person, she'd be like, "What the fuck are you doing, Peter?" Like there'd be no yeah, question right? about like, "Oh, this is my neighbor. He's really weird. He shows up in the middle of the night. He likes to smile my laundry from time Un- to unless, time." Unless, unless she has, she's seen things. And she's like, I know exactly who you are. Maybe. Like, yeah. I just don't want to mess with well, you. Well, then she's an awful person who should have reported. Oh, yeah, but, true. But Very I don't true. know why, if he's feeling all these feelings of, like, this girl's here, why he's just like, okay, Mrs. Klein, I'll see you later. Like, yeah, what the you, fuck? Like, if, you if just he's killed in, 15 people. Kill exactly. Her. If he's in that much trouble yeah. of, of losing her and getting caught and all that, he would be in protective defensive mode, and he would be looking all around the house. He'd yeah. be, he, the, the old lady would be 
ignored. Yes. And he would just be looking around the house for her. And my thing was, like, I was almost expecting, like, okay, we've seen it before in movies, but they're going to do it here because we've seen the rest of this movie anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I was expecting him to, like, kind of walk himself out and then her go to close the door or something and lock it and him just kick the door in, bash her in the face, and then go over and kill the girl. That would have been great, actually. I could at least handle this seems realistic. Instead, he's like, well, I guess she got away. I mean, that that behind the couch is way too far to keep looking. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's taking place? <laughs> what are we talking? We've gone too far. <laughs> like, no, you've killed multiple people. What's one more inch? Keep looking. Yeah, that, yeah, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't. It was so much about it that I was just, it was just laughable. But like I said, that, that was probably the most tension yes. rot scene yeah. that, that, that I liked, that I enjoyed. Um, the other one would be when... Um, Right before that, when she's trying to hide herself in the switchgrass, you know? Yes. Uh, in that whole outside exchange between him and her, trying to the little cat and mouse game, or whatever. But I, I imagine her moving around in the switchgrass would... Well, and know, her ridiculously overreacting, uh, heavy breathing. I was yeah. like, girl, you're in the middle mm. of the farm, and it is dead quiet outside. And, and you got it, some bugs. But. And, and, you know, she's over there like, <laughs> like, okay. okay. But I will say this. To be fair. She's stirred. To be fair. I know, but, and she and he's over there like, yeah, I don't hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Oh, video, where are you? Oh, no, it's not just that. I was looking at, uh, you look like uh, Ernest. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Ernest. Yeah. That's Ernest what he, kills oh, girls. Is could you this imagine? Called. This is called like, yeah, Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest, Ernest kidnapped stupid. <laughs> but she's over there crawling, making all these stupid. heavy breathing sounds, and I'm like, you're oh literally God. probably like 30, 50 feet away from him. Hold yeah. on, are we really going to skip over it? But <laughs> if, if you have the guy from or the Ernest series, remake this Ernest movie. Ernest P. Worrell here at your service. <laughs> remake this movie. And it's called Ernest Kidnapped Stupid. <laughs> it makes much more sense. The, the, the same exact movie, except Lucas Hollis is replaced with the Ernest character. And you add in I a like laugh, and you not a laugh track, but you add in music that kind of goes along with like, do, 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 do. <laughs> it's just stupid <laughs> shit happening. She's like, <laughs> and he comes out with, like, you hear something? <laughs> burr, burr. Oh, yeah. Wake <laughs> up, Vern. Hey, 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 Vern, you hear that? <laughs> you hear that, the sawgrass? This is. <laughs> This is this is horrible. That that's you know what a I, mean? better, I actually want to watch. <laughs> she got away. You know what I mean. She got away. <laughs> like, you know what I mean. God. That movie sounds better. It's so bad. Which way she go, Vern? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's, that's you're right. Actually, Vern and Ernest are serial killers who just this <laughs> this is a very dark episode, guys. This changes my childhood and he, dramatically. And he does the in his mind he does the uh, the characters too, like the old lady. Yes. I don't know why she went. <laughs> That hush, you know something like this. That's awful. That's so bad. Yeah. Jesus. No, in all seriousness though, I mean if if they if we were to remake this movie, right? I mean, do we really need to go back through? Do we need to cast a, a Bruce Willis at all? I don't think he even added anything to the film. Why? No. Why was he even a part of this movie? To sell tickets. Yeah, that's good. And that's Put it. Butts and exactly. Seats. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they were like, did. and starring Bruce Willis. Well, well, what you in, could in do the, in the poster, he's in the front. Yeah, I was about to say, like he's oh, the he main really? actor. The DVD oh, cover sad. and everything. He's 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 before Megan Fox. But Megan Fox is in there forty five minutes longer than what he you is. could do is you could like in the the movie Airplane where they have the autopilot, yes. you know, the inflatables. <laughs> you could have an inflatable Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis there in the passenger seat and then some guy off screen oh, you know reading his lines and be like oh thanks bruce yeah this is That's... basically the weird al yankovic of uh <laughs> of, of movies for this uh speaking of, of useless characters real fast though um lucas haas's wife in this movie the oh, two the two-dimensional awful, yeah. serial killer wife not only is she awful what the what does she add to the movie there's whole scenes where she doesn't appear to even be a part of the movie like when he's tucking her in that night the mom's nowhere to be seen. He's right. she's not seen for most of the movie. Well, she keeps complaining about how he's not there for them, but then she's no, not there for them. <laughs> <laughs> that's Emil Hirsch's wife though was complaining that oh, she's they not both, there. Oh, they both what they both yeah. do. Yeah, a little yeah. Well, no, I thought she's, no, she that. keeps complaining that he keeps going off uh, yeah. working <clears throat> and, he was, oh, and he had the rig and all yeah, that. He keeps, yeah, yeah, he keeps saying right. I could retire, I could yeah. quit. I could just, but just I, t- just I like tell me killing. Just tell me killing. I'll wake you up when I get home. Yeah, or you know, I'll bring you spray. Oh Jesus. With the spray. <laughs> Gross. No, the, the end. The end. Whenever the uh, mom is walking the daughter out amongst the the cops and the FBI agents and everything, and the daughter turns around and gives us a camera shot. I'm like, mm. well, that's right. You should because you were part of the movie. The mom doesn't even doesn't even her half her head's cut off in the screen. I was like, she's not a part of this movie at all. Why is she even here? 
This doesn't make sense. It was it was worse than an extra, in my opinion. I'm sorry. Well, and, and no, and, and speaking of wives, Emil Hirsch's wife. Yeah. They they could have cut out that that whole that whole Backstory? show at yeah. the beginning because I thought they were going to go down a, a, a different road when they. First of all, I don't like the way this was this was cut. They show um, Lucas Haas locking up the barn. Yep. And mm-hmm. then they cut to Emil Hirsch walk getting home and and doing this crazy face that somehow the baby thinks is. Is funny. It no, looks he's doing really the, scared. The lion. Yeah, that's scary. That that kind of scared me. Yeah, a little bit. It was <laughs> definitely scared that little baby. And they start talking about God, and then they go. Then they cut back to the um, barn. L- L- Lucas Haas going <clears throat> inside and having having his family time. Well, when they started talking about God, I'm like, okay, well maybe they're going to go that way. Yeah. Maybe Emil Hirsch is going to re- find his his light or or whatever you know at the end of the at the end of the film or whatever. But they never go back to it. They they introduce this whole God concept. Of how he's lost faith and he doesn't see God anymore, and this that, or the other, and then they just never return to it. I mean, I think it's um, because because Lucas Haas's character, what's his name? What's the character's name? Oh, oh God, um, it's Peter Hillsborough. Oh, P- Peter Hillsborough. Because that's every it. everybody Peter. in Florida is named after uh, a, a, a city county. or county that's yeah. also here. Yeah, oh. I'm Justin Lakeland. Dumbest <laughs> shit ever. Hey, John Tampa, what you doing over there? Yeah, uh, right. John I don't Flynn. know Eddie Gainesville. Yes. <laughs> Actually, Eddie, I kind of like Eddie Gainesville. Eddie Gainesville, Gainesville would absolutely bad. be in this movie. He absolutely would be, yes. And here's my partner, Eddie Gainesville, and I don't say anything but robotic lines. What about you, Kyle Duvall? <laughs> Jesus. Hey, I like Kyle Duvall. Yeah, yeah Duvall's Kyle, not bad. It's pretty good. Well, it worked for Robert. I mean, of course. I, guess it could, yeah. I don't know. There's probably there's probably some cities out there that probably sound pretty bad. I don't know. Justin Daytona Beach. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Daytona is my middle name. <laughs> That's for the earnest version, to be clear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Spring so. break, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the whole time. He's like wearing a jean jacket. He's got like, nice. like old school Oakley song. <laughs> okay, so yeah. so which one was this one? L- Lydia Hall. Uh, I don't she know. was Karen in, in the film? Was there a was, Karen? Was this, was this the killer's wife? That's the killer's wife. Yeah, she's um she's from a lot of things. She's from Van Wilder. Okay, she's I guess one of the the good looking chicks. I guess one of the fifty yeah uh, fifty to a hundred women that are in that movie at any given time. Okay, named Lindsay. Sure, apparently. Yep. But yeah, she's in Heist. No. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. huh? mm. No. Nah, I don't know Heist. <laughs> no. Really? Nah. I like Heist. Well, it's it's got your favorite. Is it a TV show? It's got Robert no. De Niro in it. I don't know. No. Oh, they. Uh, no. It's the movie. That's why. <laughs> Gene Hackman. I don't. It doesn't sound familiar. No, really. The card throwing dude. No, uh, what's Jay. His name? not that heist. Ricky J. Not that heist. Not that heist. Yeah, I was about to say this is a different heist. He's I was, I was about. about to say. I mean, what was she like? Two. Dave. It's got Dave Bautista in it, and it's got Jeffrey Morgan. Nope. Anyway, no, she's on that. Which, no idea. which is. Wait, hold on, John. You don't know heist? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. I know. I you were saying you, I thought you said you did. You didn't like heist. I'm just giving you like, time. You don't bro. like heist? I no. Know. But this heist that Kyle was talking about is one that he also produced. Oh, the, the director God. produced that ah, one too. Uh, yeah. Interesting. So he's picking the same it's the same a, character. It's mm. a family affair. No, it's only it, it's, fucking actresses and I, actors that would work with him. No, well, right. Either it's either that or it's people he enjoys working with. True. You know, which you can't do, fault him for that. No, no. They don't question his horrible mistakes and, and issues. <laughs> Wasn't I holding I'm this myself with yes men? That's how I got here. That's exactly what happened here. You know, you, okay. You you were talking about the uh, the the killer's daughter. Yes. <clears throat> a little bit earlier. Um, not great. No. Not not not. I mean, but she's like five. Or yeah. She's, or your, typ- or she's or a typical or little girl. Yeah, yeah, I think she's like. 10, she's okay, but, but yeah. I mean, she's no uh, three year old from the Patriot. No, she's no. no Natalie Portman in the Professional. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She um, reminds me of a little an, an actress though. E. T. Uh, oh ooh, damn. God. <laughs> Wow. wow! Too there, soon. Man, there it this is. is a real person there we're talking about, Justin. <laughs> wow! Be nice. <laughs> That's. I feel bad. Like I do too. That poor little girl. Well, guys, that was Screen Riot. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys liked it. You liked the, the show. Well, it was it a short-lived podcast where one guy decided to step over a line that shall never be discussed. Anyway. She. Well, I'm looking her at her credits. She's not in. Uh, I, I meant ET. Drew Barrymore in ET. Oh, oh, oh right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, right, right. sure right. you did. Yeah. She was, a nice fan- she was a fantastic actress in he was, E.T. Just to be clear, he did another dramatic effect. He did a Kyle. He waited like 30 seconds. He was like, shit, i got to have an answer for this. They are really, they're really, they really seem upset. What can I come up with? Quickly. Drew Barrymore was in E.T. Drew Barrymore. She's like a young yeah. Drew Barrymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, Way to go. But, um, good. But, but there was one scene that, that really confused me. 
uh, going back to talking about the editing sure. style yeah. or, or whatever. Um, <laughs> the editing style? Well, I don't <laughs> know cut, what else to call cut, it. They cut all the scenes up and threw them on the floor and went paste it together. Okay, and <laughs> just shuffle shit into a dustpan. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> they hit select all <laughs> and threw it on the timeline. threw it on there, yep. Yeah. Um, no, but that, that little girl was in The Haunting of Hill House. That's where I know her from, and she was phenomenal. Oh, okay. okay, okay, fair enough. Um, but the scene that really confused me was, um, I, I forget what the preceding scene was, but it randomly cut to her playing outside with the ball. She, yes. She's, she's oh, kicking yeah, yeah. the ball around in the switchgrass, and then she kicks it over next to that pipe. Yeah. And then she goes, in a terrible acting way, she like starts to crawl through the, the pipe, and she goes, I wonder if anything's in here. Yeah. You know, and she starts going through, and then you hear, uh, hello, help, anybody there? Yeah, you know the girl, or whatever. And I was like, okay, now this is like early in the movie, and so I'm thinking, okay, so he took the the girl that he just abducted, and like stuffed her in this pipe, yeah, or something. Like there there yeah. was no context to me of where this pipe was in relation to well, any any locations or the buildings or anything. So I did yeah. not realize until later in the movie, yeah, that that was the girl being locked up, yeah. That, that she could just hear him through the piping system. So so this movie, to me, and in all seriousness, this movie to me is missing every connecting shot ever. It's yes. like whoever right. made this movie has never heard of the term storyboard, ever. <laughs> and if they have, they went, nah, that's for pansies. Like, they just moved past that all together. It's and too then, much work. Yeah, and then what happens is that you end up with, like, okay, I want the scene where, like, Bruce Willis is talking to Megan Fox in a, in a, in a diner. Oh, that's going to be hot. Megan Fox is awesome. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. So we're going to do that scene. And then the next scene, we're going to show Lucas Haas, and he's going to be killing somebody. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's going to be great. And then the next scene, we're going to show Emil Hirsch. Oh, that'll be great. He's like the cop, right? Yeah, he's going to be the badass cop. What happens in between those scenes? No, that's for pansies. Like that's what that's basically what it's, took place. It's merely an inconvenience. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> merely an inconvenience. I want to go back to what something you mentioned earlier, Eddie, about yeah. I say I say a lot of things. What about was that? about, an ep- about criminal minds. Oh, okay. this episode yes. of Criminal Minds, right? Yes. What's the first thing when they get on scene on Criminal Minds? What's the first thing that they do? That one of the cops, all, one of the FBI agents, always does whenever they get to oh their my location. God, they look at the video footage. Yeah. Not our cops. No. no, nay, nay. They wait until an hour in to look at the video footage of that girl getting getting abducted. What was weird about that was that they show the video footage, yep. and I'm like, okay, so here's what, th- what threw me. This was after we see Emil Hirsch, or no, this is after the girl is found, and I'm thinking we're going to a, a flashback of the dead girl mm-hmm. who was found under the bridge by the guy who was peeing. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking we're going to a flashback of how she became the dead girl. Okay, I'm still right. with you for 10 seconds, mm-hmm. right? Then we go to this flashback, quote unquote. Then the video footage of her being abducted, more or less, by Lucas Haas, right, more or less. He kills some guy with a wrench. That never seems to get talked about. Um, and then <laughs> he does. He fucking kills him with that. You can't just hit somebody in the back or of the head. Nice with a out. wrench. And, and Unconscious. He's a big, burly truck driver. He's fine. He's, yeah. got, a, he's got a big knot on What's the What's a little of bit of head trauma, it's right? Fine. Yeah, yeah. Small so his concussion. whole it's head fine. was caved in. Whatever. Anyway, so. It's just a little brain loss. Then, they, good. then they show the CCTV video footage of it. And I'm like, okay, so this will be how they begin the investigation. Investigation. Nope. No. Nope. It never gets talked about. I'm Hour like, in. wait, mm-hmm. why did you show it there? Well, it's and very see, odd. What, what's that. weird about that is the cameras, I Are guess, shit, were by the way. Well, yeah, that and they're the special cameras. I don't know what that means. Yeah, because the the security it's like guy, the clerk had his own special. Yeah, well, cam- the security well, the clerk guy was also a security guard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he, he was also the manager, apparently, and the owner of the. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. And apparently, this guy's best friend, but not his best friend because he doesn't want to really help him. But he does want to help him. Yeah, but, but not I mean, really. is there like a whole other set of cameras? Well, I'm I'm with you. Yeah. Like, I didn't understand that whole thing. It's like, why does this guy have his own his own cameras? Because yeah. he I mean, says does he have cameras in the bathroom. He simultaneously has the ones. Like the bathroom that, that's know? all i could think but see that's no i'm serious that's no, that's where i went i was like oh so he busted him for for bathroom cameras and yeah. now he's like i need you to pull out the special cameras and he's like like the one in the john no yeah. man damn it the one i'm gonna bust you shut up yeah sh- <laughs> not that one damn that's it. the one that we share no but no, <laughs> like, he God. no he actually says that he gave the the other camera feeds to the cops right already the tape yeah, yeah. Uh, the other ex- tapes ex- or whatever, except for the. Uh, but yet, ugh. but yet, you were saying like, and you're right. They that we even saw the hidden camera tapes or whatever it's before so he even asked for them. 
yeah. don't know. It's, it's so weird. dumb. Well, and to no. me, how is he not arresting that guy immediately for obstruction of justice? So let me get this right. So you have a whole other camera feed that you decided not to turn into us yes. an hour ago whenever we originally looked into this. To be clear, mm-hmm. you're going to show me that fucking thing, and then you're going to jail. Like, so that's how that conversation Maybe goes. you are could, going to jail. Maybe that could be explained away with he's not supposed to be working on this case. No, you're right. That's very possible. But my problem is you can still arrest the guy for obstruction of justice because why the fuck didn't he give that video over the first time? Well, I'm just saying because then he'd be in trouble for looking into the case. Oh, that's a good point. I see what you're saying. But unfortunately, we don't have the dialogue to support that, You're right. The connecting shot was missing. We don't even have have an inclination that they talked after looking at that video. As far as we know, they just fucking evaporated away from each other and Emil Hirsch continued on his journey. (laughs) The the third shot that I like. Go ahead. That I like. We talked about... Um, the bar. We talked about the um, the other one. That the you grandma liked. scene the, or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, the grandma's house scene. The third one I like is, um, and it's not even it's not even that it was well acted because it wasn't even well acted, but uh, it was technically good. Where we first see the the uh, girl getting what's her name Lucy, the girl that's kidnapped. Uh, which uh, one? I think so. The one the, the <laughs> sixteen the sixteen year old Tracy. Yeah, Tracy. Yeah. 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 We see her it, the the camera. It pulls out and she's walking out as she's walking out of the hotel room. Yes, and then she's walking down the hall. The camera follows it follows her and it, it keeps pulling out. Yeah, and then it it follows her down the mm-hmm. down the uh, stairs. Where she's like the all lawn. drugged and everything. She's like a zombie. Yeah. yeah, and it follows her down the sidewalk in front of the, the the trucks. And then we have a couple of cuts in there, but it's obviously that's the same shot. And I think they did that pretty well. Okay. That, that was yeah. all one shot that they did. I'm like, okay. The, Maybe this movie's not going to be that bad. Somewhat decent mm-hmm. filmmaking. No, they lied to me. Yeah. Well, so they they managed to pull off that shot that you're talking about, but meanwhile they couldn't maintain focus in like most of the movie either. Right. Like there was there was the back to the stupid diner scene. The focus keeps changing. Like you, there literally was like a part where they're they're focused in on Megan Fox, and all of a sudden the focus like fluxes. <laughs> is the only way I can describe it. It like sort of goes out of focus and the, comes back in. And I'm the like, guy just the left camera? it on autofocus. Well, all I, yeah. could think, all I could think was like, are we supposed to be Bruce Willis in this motion? Are, they, are we so old that we're losing His cataracts are getting consciousness? In the way. <laughs> yeah, like, hold on, I almost passed out there for a second. Okay, we're good. Go ahead. I am listening to you, fellow FBI agent. <laughs> uh, it says FBI script. agent. <laughs> anyway, alright, so yeah. let's, let's talk about budget. Just real quick. Oh, wait. Do we have can, I, to? can I say one more thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm simultaneously upset that this movie like has all of these 2D, really not well thought out characters in it, but I, you know, I'm kind of okay with it because the movie only has to run for an hour and 39 minutes, and I'm afraid that if they tried to give all those people more depth, that the movie would have been like two hours and 30 minutes long. It probably would And have. I'd hate to suffer through that shit. Yeah. So I'm kind of okay with everything sort of sucking, and at least it was over quickly. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it feels like all the flashback scenes were put in to just pad the runtime. I yeah. think so, too. Yeah, because yeah. it, it adds easily it an extra 10 minutes. Yeah, and it I mean, adds nothing to the story. Or, nothing or at all. Anything, any, you can't feel any differently about the characters based off of those things. We got to awesome. get this to feature a uh, time frame. <laughs> well, and I think, I think it, had they shown Emil Hirsch, like, stressed out like leaving the bar scene just as an example he's stressed out she's just been taken by lucas haas he's stressed he's driving through the rain he's oh he's dialing his wife he's dialing who else should i call the fucking fbi because an fbi agent was just abducted now you can't you can't do that because they were doing this undercover like under yeah everybody's cover but those rules are off once you get abducted by a serial killer i think i think your boss is going to understand if you know hey I know I wasn't supposed to do it, but I got abducted by a serial killer. Can you come help? <laughs> They're not going to be like, well, that shit's on your time. Like, that's not how that <laughs> Shouldn't works. Shouldn't have been there. Yeah, like, it sounds like a personal problem. It's not. <laughs> it's a professional problem. You know... And th- instead, they're doing all these stupid flashbacks. I'm like, why not just show him stressed out? We get why he's stressed out. She was just abducted. You don't need to be like, but he really loved her. There's actually a whole romance here that we're she not didn't, investigating. She didn't, she didn't fill out a 703B uh, form, <laughs> overtime form. <laughs> we're going to say. Well, you know, to Brazil it? <laughs> yeah. didn't fill out the right form. <laughs> I, was, I don't know. I was just in here thinking, like, um, like, what would I do to make the film better, right? Not make it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. just, just quit while you're ahead. Oh, well, I mean, wouldn't it have been kind of interesting if the little girl, if they put little seeds throughout the whole movie of the little girl, like, uh, the... Uh, Tracy, she's in captivity, but she like befriends the little girl through the pipe. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. you know throughout the movie. Yeah. But then at the end, when the 
the girl like tries to run away, she still squeals on her. What the fuck is like, she counting, by the way? Stars, stars. I assume. Okay, yeah, that was stars. weird. Okay, that was weird. But I agree with you. you never I do think stars when you were a kid. No. What a sad uh, childhood. Well, you know, I had a. I was not you, stupid. Um, you, wow. Just saying. Ouch. So I agree with you. I do think that had she so, turned on her, that would have been good. There's a bunch, by the way. Stop, John. Don't be insulted. So she's ET. Oh and no. stupid. Oh, That's no. what I heard. Okay, Justin, we are both going to hell together. <laughs> uh, but but seriously, I do agree with you. I think the movie could be saved, though, John. I do. I think if you cut out um, anything with Bruce Willis, just anything with him, take that out, right? Just all the references to Switchgrass. Uh, yeah, you don't need that. You don't shit. need that. Okay, we're gonna rename the movie anyway. That's that's gone. So anything with Bruce Willis is gone. Midnight. Go ahead and leave in the Ballers guy. Because he's in there briefly, doesn't really hurt anything, but at least fix his fucking uniform and yeah, stuff, true. right? Minimum. Um, <laughs> I think you leave Emil Hirsch and his stupid little mustache and all that stuff. You leave all that because he does get progressively better in the movie, I think. It's not great, but he gets better, yeah, right? And you make it more dark. Like, you make it to where Lucas Haas is not going after just um, the women that he's going after, but he eventually goes after Emil Hirsch and Emil Hirsch's family, right? right? You yeah. eventually, you go almost seven with it. So mm-hmm. if you do it, if you mm-hmm. reshoot it and you make seven, basically, yeah, I think you can say re- be, remove all the flashbacks. It'd be a mixture between like Zodiac and Seven. Yeah, what's fix, in the barn? fix the exactly. <laughs> what's, oh what's my in god! The barn? What's in the barn? <laughs> what's in the barn, Vern? <laughs> <laughs> One of those two movies is going to be excellent. <laughs> I don't know. What you got in the barn, Vern? <laughs> I think we shoot both because we have the budget for it. Apparently, no. But I also think you fix the color and you make it not look like a TV show. I don't and, know, but I hear something in the switch glass. Yeah, the music's got to be fixed. Too. Yeah, I mean, oh, there's god. a lot of things, but I I do think it would be like, had they shot this and just been like, it's awful, can it, right? And gave it to a better editor and a better uh, just about everything else. I do think that this movie could have been salvaged. And I'm guessing there's others. There's got to be, right? I mean, this, they can't be that shitty. There's got to be other shots in a can somewhere that the director's cut of this, all seven and a half hours of it, is probably fantastic. I, I almost um, feel like, like I think, John, you said earlier that the editor might not have had enough stuff to work with I, I almost wonder if this director just, just don't doesn't think they get shot coverage it. yeah you just don't think they yeah, shot yeah. it it's very possible then they were just like fuck what do you guys want to do uh, I guess flashbacks okay fly, fucking flashback I mean, montages at, every three minutes Let's they're looking it. at the production sheet and they see that Bruce Willis only has uh, eight hours to work yeah so yeah you gotta get through it yeah gotta make it work god I hope well, it I mean, he's been in hours. like what four movies something in 2021 yeah was he really I think so uh, I don't know yeah there was one listed here out of death Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Which, you know, it's got, I think, a 3.1. But it looks like one of those that it's just got him and another girl with a shotgun. He's just getting just... paid at this point, yeah. right? Like yeah. he, this, He's working on his retirement I mean, fund. Yeah, he's got Cosmic Sin, Midnight in the Switchgrass, Out of Death, Survive the Game, and Apex. None All of which very are very generic sounding. Deadlock, Fortress, American Siege, and that's, that's 2021. All in this 2021. Guy, this guy produced the majority of those. Did he really? Yeah. 2022, one, two, three, Gasoline Alley, Vendetta, Die Like Lovers, Corrective Measures, A Day to Die. And then there's others, like four or five, five more in post-production. I think you're right. He's petting his retirement. That's I think what so he's too. doing. A Day to Die, by the way, I think that's Die Hard, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it sounds like it. It might be. Yeah. I don't know. He plays Alston. That's not, no, no, that's not Die Hard. Mm-hmm. No. If it was Die Hard, it would be, um. oh, God. I can't believe John McClane. McClane. John McClane. Yeah, John McClane. I was like, I can't believe I just pulled a Kyle. Her. That was for dramatic effect. Her. To be clear, Her. go, go <laughs> ahead and hit go us with the budget. Yeah, hit us right. with the budget. Yeah, so a whopping fifteen million dollars. No way. Uh, <sighs> two of which went to Bruce Willis. I'd say seven and a half oh, went to Bruce Willis. Oh, you know one thing we didn't mention about this? Speaking <laughs> Too about much the, went to yeah. Bruce Willis. Yeah. Speaking about the budget, uh, John, you told me that this was all shot, was it in... Oh my gosh. This was in Puerto Rico? Yes. It, part of it was Puerto Rico and part of it was Ohio. Okay. Yeah, all it says on IMDb is his filming locations, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Like, what? what this wasn't even shot in the States? No. Nope. You know what's funny? Well, is, I mean, it was in Ohio. Mm, or two. The guy, who, the, the guy who directed this is from Miami. Okay. Okay. Well, so, uh, well, just you would want to shoot in your own home. Yeah, well, shoot well, Miami. Shoot, well, well, not the Switch class. Film in Pensacola. But, yeah. <laughs> they need the tourism dollars. Yeah. Well, not to mention, I mean, it can't be that much cheaper to shoot in Puerto Rico than it is. No. Because, I mean, you got to move a production crew yeah. over there. You, I mean, you got to... The flights alone... Especially... It seems like it would be cheaper to do they it. They wanted a vacation. I was about to say, unless, of course, you want a vacation in Puerto Rico. Well, here's <laughs> another like, thing, too. Is, and Bermuda's just a short trip Well, it's away. like, is uh, they what, shot Titanic? This during, yeah. That's the reason that well, James Cameron did Titanic. <laughs> yeah. They shot this during the pandemic. Yeah. Mm. So... 
yeah. why why go to Puerto Rico? Do you think? The, okay, do you think the pandemic? Do you think that that actually impacted the movie? It like could've. maybe the movie sucks that much because pandemic. I, I maybe would, I would say that shooting schedules or I don't know. I don't who know. Knows? I, I I would say that it. Yeah, it, it would it would be foolish to say that it didn't affect it at all, right? Yeah. Because because there has to be something that it affected. But what? I don't know. So you wrote you write in by yourself in a room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then but then that brings me to what it actually made. Yeah. Um. Now, granted, it's, 800, it came out. They came out this year. Yeah. Two hundred eight thousand. I was about to say it's not eight hundred. There's no way. Yeah, two hundred eight thousand wow. dollars. Yeah. Wow. Which that makes sense, just because nobody's going to the theaters, and this is definitely not theater quality. No, it's not. I mean, maybe maybe a Friday and a Saturday, and then it's out. It's gone. Mm. <laughs> and they're going to try Netflix. to make that buck. <laughs> they're going to try to make that back at twenty dollars a pop on, on streaming. Oof, no, yikes! No thanks. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I will give the audience first. So this got a twenty percent. <laughs> okay. By the audience, far too fair. I, right. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then the critics give it an eight <laughs> percent, which is also still far too fair. <laughs> like I'm wondering what what eight percent of critics out there went. I've seen worse. You know what I mean? Like I've seen worse. Like I, I am gonna say the same thing when I give my rating, but but the movies that I'm gonna say it against are really bad. Like yep. Bill and Ted face the music bad. Mm. You know what I mean? So. Well, John, yeah. since this was your movie, you get the honor of rating it first. <laughs> it's yep. awful. It's an awful film. First up. It it was a movie, so at least get one point from me because it was a movie. It gets a whole point it just for being a, a movie? It gets a whole point for being a movie. Damn. Jesus. That's but, your rating? No, I mean, this is... I mean, it's, it's, Eddie's not, is a point one for just being a movie. I know, but that's... <laughs> yeah. So, in comparison, <laughs> yes, it's a one. But no, I, I there, there's so much wrong with this movie. The continuity problem, the the blatant just I don't I don't give a fuck about showing this or showing that or just not. I'm just gonna willy nilly. I'm gonna make a film with my eyes closed. Mm. It it kills me. And you've got Bruce Willis, and he's not in the movie. They lied to me. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think he just woke up. He could have dragged him to set. Is what it I th- well, I think you guys call. I think he called it. He did all his lines in one day. I mean, well, he did. They yeah. did all of those shots in one day, and they were like, "Shit, we got to get Megan Fox over to makeup quick. She's got to wake up in a hospital bed holding Bruce Willis's hand." Where do we need Bruce Willis in the hospital? Get him over there. Uh, like, I mean, it was just... Yeah, and and I mean, I'm not a Megan <laughs> Fox fan. I mean, yeah. is she pretty? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eh. But it just it, the movie does nothing for me. It doesn't doesn't yeah. move me. I mean. Yeah, is it cool to see Lucas Haas in something? Yeah, I guess so. But even then, as a serial killer, I'm not really convinced. Um, Would you be more convinced by James Vanderbeek from Dawson's Creek? <laughs> no. He was a serial killer in one of the Criminal Minds episodes, and Ernest was his dad. Are you serious? I no. shit you not. Yes, it's the, oh, it's the culminating great. factor. But yeah, he was pretty good in that. He had a, he had like multiple personalities. Nice. But, but no, I... I, <laughs> I I'm not going to say I'm less of a person for having watched this one. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but it's it's not it's not well done at all. And I think that the four of us on our worst day could probably do a better better job making making mm. this film, even if we had the same script. Um, I'm going to give this. <laughs> hmm, I'm going to give it a one point three. Okay. Okay, a 1.3 for John. Um, yeah, this was not good. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say. Uh, the The best tension bringing scene to me was like what we talked about with the grandmother's house, where he's trying to find the girl, right? You know, uh, but but then Eddie, yeah, you bring up the the faulty points of that is like this guy's at his his rope's end of in trouble. He needs to find this girl, yet he just stops three inches away from her. Mm. You know, and he doesn't. He doesn't just move the old bat out of the way and just keep looking around for her, <laughs> or just reach over and break her neck. Like I, I would have been like, "Oh, he's actually a badass!" Like, "Oh, Jesus!" Do a like, do a Steven Seagal. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it'd be. It'd be here, I watched. Under, I watched Under Siege this week. <laughs> nice. <God. laughs> But he could do it it's like so bad. <laughs> it would be hilarious. He didn't even look at her. He just reaches over. And I just doesn't. don't understand why you got to be talking. Why are you yeah. yelling at me? Oh, then now you're dead. It's yeah. like, <laughs> not talking anymore. Um, it was entertaining to see Machine Gun Kelly get his ass kicked. Uh, Is that who that guy was? Machine yeah. Gun Kelly? Yes. Uh, Which Megan Fox, that's where they met. And now they're boinking. Yeah. 
Well, no. Well, Wait, are, are, they, are they still right together? Now? They're boyfriend girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. they're boyfriend girlfriend. They're a couple. Oh my god. Well, which I'm I, assuming they're boyfriend. I, I think they're they they split up though. I'm oh, not sure. I don't know. Um, but knows? but apparently the rumor is that they didn't show up for the premiere because they hated the movie. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Well, they had one of the best lines in the movie. But go ahead. Megan what? Fox can't oh, can't can't about. be picky. No. I mean, she's lucky to even be in a movie after she pissed off Spielberg. So. Yeah, oh, we're talking. I, I, I thought we were talking about two of them because you said she can't be picky. I'm like, but better than that guy. Like, I mean, she can be. She <laughs> no, can I'm pick. not talking about that. Yeah, no, I was gonna no, say no, like, no. She's not, not, not personally, professionally. She's not hideous, John. I mean, like, I'm not gonna. I'm not throwing it out there for her either. But at the same time, I'm <laughs> no, like, she's not hideous. If I found her in bed, I wouldn't be like, oh, get out. Like, no. I mean, yeah, we can talk. Like, we could have a conversation <laughs> still. <laughs> you know, like, come on. <laughs> but Machine Gun, apparently, Machine Gun Kelly. I was like. Who is this piece of shit? Like yeah. they really found some guy from Pensacola to be to be part of this movie. Like, good lord! Yeah, you're right. Um, but I mean, there's, there's just so much stuff, bad stuff that we already covered about. Yeah, from the music to the terrible flashbacks, um, the the dialogue, the the paper mache um, Bruce Willis cut out <laughs> that he was. Um, <laughs> a cardboard cutout would have at least been entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> life size cutout. I don't know why. I don't know why paper mache. Oh, I don't know. Man. Just first thing that popped in my head. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go with an even one. Okay, that would be an odd number. Be an odd one. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a point. <laughs> uh, I meant not to be a dick about it, but he does have a whatever. point. Whatever. <laughs> I, mean, I meant just an e- whatever. Look at the go. big brains on John. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so same thing. It's a bad movie. Um, I don't know. I the the problem I had honestly was that it was so shit at the beginning that as Megan Fox and Emilia Hirsch sort of hit their stride, I was kind of like applauding them. Like, good job, you guys did your lines in that scene well. You made it through that scene, guys. But but like even at the end when he confronts the 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 mother and he gives the um he gives Tracy's or not Tracy but the, the girl that died her cross to her. Yes. yes. You know, and then she starts breaking down. I was like like console her be, nope. be like a cop be, well like be like a cop you could say to him the entire movie when he can when he goes up against the serial killer's wife and she's like well i don't know where he's at i'm just distracting you for the next couple of minutes i'd be like bitch get on the ground get your daughter in the corner <laughs> mm-hmm. where's your husband my partner it, it, apparently is missing <laughs> yeah. and i believe she's at this here farm now get your ass over there in the corner <laughs> i reckon so, she's here and tell me where she go. is but no he doesn't say any of that he just is like well I i'm just gonna do you have here. lemonade that's the proper term i know do, do you have lemonade that i could oh this is a very oh it the, where's your husband he's investigating a strange noise in the field <laughs> like what the fuck is going on it was so odd it was just odd he just graduated the academy apparently uh, i guess so he that's how you got to whatever Level is that now, Justin? No, nothing. Oh, okay. I, just, I thought of a joke, but I don't want to say it. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> gonna get me another hot trouble. Anyhow, um, <laughs> yeah, just just across the board. Now, cinematography was bad. The uh, continuity was bad. The storytelling, just in general, was not there. Um, they did tell a coherent story. I can say that they told a coherent story. There's a serial killer. They found him. How they found him is unclear because Megan Fox never gets actually discovered. We never see Emil Hirsch find she her. She doesn't do really any detective work herself. No shit. She plays yeah. bait the whole time. And then Emil Hirsch <laughs> is walking around the field and she blacks out uh, credits. Like I was waiting for credits. I was like, so she died. Okay, good. But you killed him. Good job. At least that, that would be poetic it, justice. It in resolved, a way, right? yeah. yeah, I could deal with that. No. Then she wakes up in a hospital bed. I'm like, did he, so he found her, apparently? that Could we not see it? Did you run out of fucking film? Like, well, no. why couldn't we watch this digital well, no, film? He, we, he, we do know that he, he finds her because the, the, the barn door opens and the light flashes. So the light happens, that but at the same time that she apparently... It happens at the same time, which makes yeah. it hard yeah. to see. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Which, yeah, bad movie. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, for me... Oh, God. The problem is the devil's reign. I'll be honest with you. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on par, but just slightly. Oh God, I don't even know if I want to go slightly above. No, it's on par with the devil's reign. It's a point seven. Jesus. Okay, a point seven. Yeah, it's on par with the devil's reign. <laughs> and the problem is the devil's reign is so fucking laughable. But at least they they show you the shots they needed. I mean, yeah. I can't bitch at them for that. So yeah. I'm like, do I go with the movie I hate and too much of the shots? They need. <laughs> too much or <laughs> None of what I need to see, and I have to piece the movie together myself. Oh, right. God. Yeah. Splitting see, horrible hairs. See, with this movie, there are there are some out there that are so good, or so bad, they're good. Yeah. Right? 
And then there are some that are so bad, they're just bad. Mm-hmm. They're just really bad films. Yep. Not even, like, you can't even laugh at it because you're crying so much because you're in pain from watching what is on, on your TV. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm just going to give it a one. A one? Yep. Okay. So Kyle <laughs> I was like, it. I'm not even going to be it, around this, the bush. This is, get me off of this episode. This is bad. This is a one. <laughs> so that means that uh, Midnight in the Switchgrass, uh, halfway starring Bruce Willis, <laughs> gets a one. Gets a one? Yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> An odd one. An odd slash even one. <laughs> um, so now we need to figure out who's going to be spinning for next week's movie. And I believe that is uh, Kyle, or I'm um, sorry, Eddie and I. Yes. Yes, right? yes it is. Can't uh, be me. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. All right. You already went. So. So here we go. It's like, what, f- six well, genres pick, left? Who and picked? it's Justin. Oh, oh crap. yeah. Cool. Right. Yes, we have six genres left. Yeah. All right. All right. What am I doing? Here we go. I bet you it's sci-fi, Justin. We already had sci-fi. Did we? It is sci-fi. What is, what is going no, on? No, we didn't have sci-fi. Now you have sci-fi. Oh wait, no. I think I picked uh, Arrival for Wild Card. Maybe. Uh, but it, it was, Arrival? Yeah. That was like two seasons ago. I yeah. Know. Well, yeah. I'm saying, but I have. As a host, I've had sci-fi before. Oh. Like I haven't had Western. I haven't had like. Oh, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Well, no, nobody's had Western, ain't. but John. I know. No, and me apparently. <laughs> we we went through this. Yes, we did. Um, so it's sci-fi. It is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, since I have sci-fi, I think I'm gonna go with um the Dune remake. Oh wow! From okay. 2020. Um, it is one of my favorite uh, directors, uh, Denis Villeneuve, uh, who also did uh, Arrival, that we also did on the oh. show. Mm-hmm. I did. Um, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, he's he's a really good director in, in my opinion. Um, so Dune, it's uh, the feature adaptation of Frank Herbert's science fiction novel about the son of a noble family entrusted with the protection of the most valuable asset and most vital element in the galaxy. Okay. Now is this is this a remake of Dune no, or is this a yes. sequel? No, it's oh, a remake. It's a remake, as far as it's a I remake. Know. I have not seen it yet. It's so I like, got the same characters, the uh, character names. It's so, same plot. So here's the thing. So y- yes, basically okay. the same plot. Um, not okay. the same characters, 100 percent, because the original one took larger portions of the book and condensed them, okay. so that you could understand more of what was actually happening in this universe. Because I had to say, I've never read the book. The book's 900 I, pages long. And I've never watched the full Dune. So, okay. Like the original Which one. is perfect because... You're not missing nothing. When you, <laughs> shut up, John. <laughs> when you watch this, uh-huh. here's my challenge to you two, okay? And Justin, but Justin I know won't do this, so it's to you two. You don't get to do extra research. You just have to watch the movie, and then we're going to have a conversation when we come back, and let's see if you guys got anything so out you of can it. Man- the pro- man. No, no, because the problem is this. When I watched it, I felt a certain way, so I want to I okay. talk about it, and I want to see... What you guys got out of it. Now, you read the book, though. I've read... um, No, I haven't read the entire book. I've read portions of the book. The problem is the book is 900 pages long, and it's not total because he's got a whole series based on the book. And his son or brother, one of the two, wrote more books. So there's a whole canon that's involved in this. And then there's actually a a dictionary, basically. It's an encyclopedia set that goes along with it because there's a whole history... This is a very, very thought out. It's it's as thought out or more than the Star Wars universe. I okay. mean, it's it's completely like it's completely fleshed out. Yeah. So I mean, when you when you meet a character in that in this movie, there's a whole world there that you like a whole backstory. And yeah, everything. you just have to know it or you don't, and that's why right. I'm curious what you guys are going to get yep. from it. So uh, if you want to follow along at home, just go to justwatch.com, look up Dune, see everywhere it's playing. Uh, I'm pretty sure this thing is streaming on. Everything. Every corner yeah, in, the, in the world right now. So uh, just just turn <laughs> you your TV on. Diet on it. Yeah, it? I'm, yeah, I'm just turn the TV on. I'm sure you'll accidentally start watching it. Um, so yeah, we'll see you next Saturday. Let's see it. See you later.